Lecture 1, Analytic Epidemiology Overview of Study Design. In our course, this is our course map, and um, we will be uh, discussing today um, the area related to investigation of health problems. We've already covered descriptive epidemiology, measures of um, disease frequency and so we are now in the area over here in which we are going to be looking at analytic epidemiology formulating hypotheses about um, the relationship of particular factors to certain diseases and conditions and then trying to conduct studies to assess those relationships. There are two main types of research, uh, qualitative research, which is uh, designed to explore human elements of a topic, and it usually gathers data through observations or interviews of subjects. And um, it typically is not using the same kind of quantitative methods as um, the other kind of study uh, our research, which is quantitative research, which is um, systematic empirical investigation of phenomena. And then finally, there can be uh, a research in which both qualitative and quantitative approaches are used. When one starts a study or starts addressing a particular problem, uh, one of the first things that one addresses is what is the research question or what are we trying to figure out? Um, we may be trying to figure out, uh, does this particular food, uh, is it likely to cause um, disease in people who eat it? Um, is this particular therapy effective in treating this particular disease? Um, what happens to this group of people if they're exposed to this um, toxic agent over time? Do they develop disease or not? So those are for some examples of the kinds of questions we might be asking. <clears throat> As I mentioned, the epidemiologic studies are mostly performed in order to look at the relationship of health or disease to one or more specific factors. And this relationship is often posed as a hypothesis that, uh, in other words, let's assume that um, this drug is effective in treating this disease. Uh, for the purposes of many studies, that hypothesis is interestingly enough stated as a null hypothesis. In other words, the study makes the assumption at the beginning that this drug has no effect on the disease. That's called the null hypothesis because there's no effect. And uh, the study seeks to determine whether or not the null hypothesis is true or not. Um, if it's not true, then it can be rejected. So, um, and as it, the last bullet here says, generating questions for study and hypotheses takes practice and one gets used to it over time. As one is uh, developing a study, one goes through a number of thoughts to try to figure out what the best type of study is to use. And there are certain um, choices that can be made in the study design in terms of the selection of the subjects for the study that um, can make it um, more likely that we can generalize the results to the larger population from which the study subjects are drawn. Most studies that we will be doing will in fact have a control group, a group that um, either is not exposed to a particular factor that we're interested in or is not given a particular, say, treatment so that uh, they serve as a comparison group. This is very important uh, and gives us a sense of whether or not a particular exposure or treatment in fact causes changes that we may see in the subjects to uh, which it is given. Um, in experimental studies, um, <clears throat> we have a um, always have a uh, control group. I mean, it is an experiment and we're comparing um, a group that is exposed to a given treatment, for example, 
for intervention and to those who are not. Uh, in analytic studies, what is called the control group may be defined in somewhat different ways depending on the type of study used, and we will talk about that a bit later in the lectures. We mentioned earlier that there are different types of research, and then within quantitative research, we have epidemiological studies, and there are different types of epidemiological studies. And they are typically classified as either observational or experimental. Um, experimental or intervention, intervention studies uh, usually involve an active attempt to change a disease. So uh, we may be trying to uh, change an exposure to a um, environmental condition, for example, or to a, uh, a drug, for example, or other treatment. We may be trying to change a behavior. Um, and these are similar to the kinds of experiments that are done in other sciences, for example, physics and chemistry. The second type of epidemiologic study is known as observational studies, and they uh, sort of allow nature to take its course. Um, the investigator observes or measures, but doesn't intervene in the process itself. And they include studies that are known as descriptive studies or analytical studies. Uh, in a descriptive study, uh, we are limited to a description of the occurrence of the disease. Um, we don't usually have a uh, control group, uh, so we can't really test hypotheses, but it uh, often provides information to allow us to generate hypotheses that can then be um, investigated in analytical studies. And those are the second type. Um, they, analytical studies, look at relationships between um, health status or outcomes and uh, other variables or factors. So this slide um, shows in a very simplified form those two different kinds of epidemiologic studies, experiment and observational. And in an experiment, there is both the artificial manipulation of a study factor. In other words, for example, the treatment or the intervention is imposed on the study group. And there is a random allocation of the study factor to the subjects. In other words, the subjects are randomly divided up into groups, and then one group receives the um, study factor or treatment, for example, and the other group does not. In an observational study, uh, as we said before, we let nature run its course. Uh, there is no random allocation of the study factor to subjects, and um, we don't manipulate the study factor itself. So uh, this is just a slide that summarizes um, the different kinds of studies that uh, we call experimental and observational studies, uh, randomized controlled trials, um, which many of you have no doubt heard of and are frequently used to test drugs. Um, these trials are kinds of experimental studies. Um, there is a group of studies known as field trials in which uh, a population and individuals within the population uh, living, say, in a community or whatever um, are subjected to an intervention um, but the intervention is assigned on an individual basis. Uh, community trials, in contrast, is where an entire community um, it receives an intervention, um, whereas uh, other communities do not, and then the communities are themselves compared. So as you can see over here on the right, for the unit of the study, uh, randomized controlled trials, um, field trials are directed at individuals, and community trials are directed at populations. We will not be discussing the cluster randomized control trials. Under observational studies, we have both descriptive studies that we mentioned before, where we don't have control groups typically, and we are often trying to describe a problem within a population uh, to give us an idea of some factors that might be possible, uh, possibly related to health problems and uh, about which we might want to do further studies later. Analytical studies, we will be discussing all of these um, in the 
later parts of this um, series of lectures.